G'day folks, it's me again. Well, for today's quick little video, we're going to be looking at building an enclosure to house these two ballasts that you see in front of you. Uh, you might have already seen them in a couple of previous videos, but uh, they're both very heavy and uh, I'm tired of manhandling them about, so it's high time they got their enclosure, which will be, it'll be still very heavy, but it'll be a lot easier to move around with proper handles and stuff. But anyway, let's just have a closer look at the ballast. It's just a uh, quick shot of the data plate on one of the ballasts. Put it simply, there's two types of metal halide lamps. You've got the low voltage types, which is normally below a thousand watts. They're designed to run on 240 volt mains. And then a thousand watts and up, you normally have the high voltage type, which is designed to run between a couple of phases on 380 to 440 volts. So the advantage of having the higher wattage lamps on the 415 or whatever voltage is that the arc current is a lot lower because the, they do make two kilowatt lamps designed to run on 240 volt mains but the ballasts are massive and it's I think the arc current on one of them is something ridiculous like 15 amps so you're going to need big cables big ballasts whereas a two kilowatt high voltage type I think the arc current is only nine amps anyway right I've had a measure I've ordered a suitably sized steel enclosure to house them and uh, the main ingredients are laid out in front so it's time to get the drill out and do some work one thing to note is uh, the reason why I'm having two selectable so I can run them in parallel is because it literally is just a high voltage step up transformer followed by an ordinary high voltage choke so by running them in parallel I can run 2000 watt metal halide lamps and also if you use a variac to reduce the input voltage you can also run other types such as american style 1500 watt lamps and uh, i'm going to include a, an igniter which is going to be triggerable and overall they are quite versatile so i'll be able to run between 1000 to 2000 watt high voltage tamp lamps with a few in between right i've got the uh, handles on i've got the gland plate sorted the switches and the sockets are all in we've got some nice labels so now it's time to do the mechanics on the inside so let's get to it well I've got the gear tray populated and I've managed to get it inside the cabinet and let you tell me that was a bit of an experience by itself because each one of those ballasts despite not being that large in terms of volume they weigh 15 kilograms each so when there's two of them on there yeah it's uh, well <laughs> anyway, time to get on with the wiring. Right, it's uh, all wired up. I'm not really happy with the way the wiring turned out. It's a bit messy, but what can you do? It is what it is. Uh, I've also run out of cable ties, so I'll have to go and get some more of them. But anyway, I've got the igniter wired up so it's triggerable with that contactor, and I can also run either a single ballast for 1000 watt or I can run them together in parallel for 2000 watt so the only thing now is to uh, put some power to it and see if it blows up right we've got a lamp in there it's a uh, one kilowatt venture it's a high voltage type it's also a probe start with an auxiliary electrode so let's hit the magic button oh, immediate ignition Mm. I'll wait for a while for it to uh, run up to full brightness and then we'll get the ND filter on and have a look at the arc making some nice noises right there's the uh, lamp at full power it's quite a nice fat arc, must be a fair amount of sodium in it. There is a bit of uh, colour segregation, you can see at the top, compared to the bottom where most of the halides are. The uh, arc current of this lamp is 4.1 amps with an arc current of 264 volts. It lasts for 12,000 hours and puts out 110,000 lumens, colour temperature of 4,000 Kelvin with a colour rendering index of 68%. So let's have a closer look at the arc. You 
See the uh, condensed halides at the bottom there? This is a new lamp, so I don't think it's quite stabilised. Probably need a good few hundred hours before it starts to stabilise, but that is a uh, really nice, nice coloured lamp. But anyway, we're not here to see a thousand watts. We want to see more. Yes, we want more. That's not a lamp. This is a lamp. Philips HBIT high output, 2000 watts. Mmm. 210,000 lumens with a service life of 12,000 hours, 50% failures. Its color temperature is 3800 Kelvin with a 65% colour rendering index. The arc voltage is 232 volts with a current of 9.1 amps. So, uh, I think we need to power this thing up. Mm. So we want 2 kilowatts and I want the igniter. 3, 2, 1, go. Oh, that's pulling some amps. Oh, yeah. I'm just adjusting the variable ND. Oh, yeah. Shit, that's pulling some amps <laughs> from the mains, I mean. Nice. You can see the halides evaporating. Metal halide is uh, Fantastic technology, and it's getting really, really bright. Right, uh, I'm going to pause, and you know the routine, I'll be back when it's fully run up. And there we have it, a 2000 watt metal halide lamp at full power, and you are witnessing the arc stream. And bloody hell, it's bright, and it's chucking out some incredible heat. I mean... Oof. It really is uh, dazzling and I'm not going to do it for long because it's getting seriously warm in here now and the ballast is working well Whew. That is amazing You can just about see one of the electrodes there Oh, That is incredible I mean, it was seriously bright. Can't even look at the walls. And I've got sunglasses on as well. <laughs> you can imagine uh, quite a few of these up a tower lighting up a stadium. It's a really nice quality light as well. Oh well, that's enough. Thanks for watching. Hope you found that interesting. Bye bye now.